for a visit from Commander Cassidy. And he has just like you guys all all around the country. And uh, I grew up not far from here in, in York, Maine, maybe about an hour or so, hour and a half, hour and a half away. And when I was a little kid, my, my grandmother was in Lowell and my dad grew up here in Lowell, so we spent time on uh, Thanksgiving afternoon throwing footballs around in Lowell and this sort of thing. So it's really kind of fun and special to be back and, and sharing uh, about it with you. And to be at a school named after one of my colleagues, Krista McAuliffe. I mean, when I, I think I was in high school, uh, 
when that, that accident happened, and uh, it was a national tragedy, as, as you can imagine, and uh, it's really kind of, it's real special that, that there's schools and things named after, after the great, great folks like her. And we, in my astronaut class, every couple years we have new astronaut classes. In my astronaut class, we had um, a group of educators too. Joe Acaba, Dottie um, Metcalf, and Ricky Arnold were three educator astronauts that we, we now have um, at NASA after the, the great work that Krista McAuliffe and another woman named Barbara Morgan did earlier in that time. So anyways, a little bit of history for you about the about space program and specifically educators in, in space. Family and friends are about a mile away uh, preparing to watch the launch. Uh, as we climb in, we're in there for about three hours before. So it's a, that's like from when you get to school until lunchtime. Imagine lying on your back in your classroom with your feet up on the desk from when you arrive until lunch. Eventually, you get kind of squirmy. You just want to get the heck out of that position. And that's what happens when the rocket lights. And off we go. And it's this big rumbling thing. And you know what? Do you think it's a really hard push in the back? It's actually not. You're right, it's not. It's just, it kind of feels like a slow, gradual push as you get faster and faster and faster. That's called acceleration. As you accelerate, going faster up through the whole process. Raise your hand if you think it takes us an hour to get to space. Raise your hand if you think it takes us one minute. No, it's in between. It's about nine minutes it takes for us to go to get to space. Which is actually pretty quick. Think about that. That's maybe three songs on the radio or something like this. Uh, and during that time, we're riding along and we're following, uh, there's different instruments and different gauges that we have to look at and make sure that everything's going just right because if it's not, we have some things we have to take care of um, on these books called procedures. We can open up a book and it tells us what to do if certain things are going wrong. Well, then those engines stop. And, and you feel zero, all of a sudden you feel the effects of no gravity, and you feel like you're tumbling around. Imagine you're just sitting in this room and you could float halfway between the ceiling and the floor. It'd be pretty fun, right? Well, it takes a little bit for your brain to figure out what in the world is going on here. I'm not used to this. Um, but, oh, by the way, it doesn't stop. Our work doesn't stop because we immediately have to start preparing to rendezvous to the space station, which, are, which is showing here. That's the view through our little window as we line up these crosshairs to drive, like a video game, to drive our spaceship into the space station. And you can see it looks nice and slow and smooth, right? But the reality is, those two things are going five miles a second. So picture yourself at your house, and then one second later you're in school, or maybe even farther than that for some of you. It's really going fast, but it looks really nice and slow as we drive in, line up those crosshairs, and then connect the two spaceships together, and grab on and suck the two vehicles together nice and firmly so that we don't have a leak. Leaks are bad in space, right? We don't want to leak. Everybody realize that? We want to keep the atmosphere inside the spaceship because there's no air on the outside. We want to keep it that way. So we make sure there's no leaks, and then we open the hatches and come on in. My, my crewmate Chris Hadfield is a Canadian guy, and he has my space suit. And you can see right here, uh, different pieces and parts and you can assemble um, different pieces and parts and sizes to fit each person. Uh, so that's what we do before each spacewalk. We build up the suit to fit you, and make sure we get in it, make sure it fits before we go outside. Uh, if when we are outside, the first thing for our own safety is not letting go with your hands, but these things here are called safety tethers, and they'll pull you back to um, wherever you're hooked to, if you did fall off. You guys, has anybody seen the movie Gravity? Yeah, so, so in the movie Gravity, people have fallen off the space station, and, and we would prevent that with these hooks that I just showed you. It takes a while to get the spacesuit on, probably a couple hours, about four hours, when it's all said and done. Here's a sped up image of all that. And you get the whole suit on, they put us into the little tiny part called the airlock, close the door, and then open a valve, you take your hand and, and rotate a valve, and that opens uh, to equalize the pressure to outside, and then you can open the hatch and float outside the space station to do some work. And uh, 
It's generally about a six to seven hour spacewalk outside doing um, doing a spacewalk, and it's very much uh, a big. It's a big plan. We follow along this plan, and, and and the people on the ground are telling us what to do and reminding us how to do certain things. On one of those spacewalks, my friend Luca, the same guy that I shaved my hair for, he had water leaking into his helmet. So, do you think that's a good thing? No. no. Unless you're a fish, that's a bad thing to have water on the inside. So when I, he said, I think I have water floating, I went out and looked in, and sure enough, there's this ball of water jiggling around on his head. And then it, it grew and grew and grew and kind of covered his eyes and his ears and his nose. And uh, finally, we were able to make it back inside here. You can see, and open, open the hatch and get the helmet off. You'll see here in the video, it's hard to see on the screen, but there's little drops of water flying all around after they get the helmet off and wipe up all the water and they clean up his, his face. And just now, this is like nine months after the fact, just now we finally, finally figured out what happened uh, with the spacesuit and how it, how it went wrong. And so I think we're, we're back to having healthy spacesuits again for this upcoming spacewalks in the summertime.